Hello everyone, Joshua Silverman from Constant Calibering here with Paul Scanlon of Legion M. How, how are you doing today? Awesome, well, awesome, good to how, meet you. How is the F Phoenix weather treating you? It's nice and warm, toasty. Yeah, as anyone can tell, we're uh, doing a lovely... We cooked our breakfast on the hood yeah. of the Cadillac this yeah. morning. I mean, look at this lovely <laughs> car we have back here, which we'll stop put some pictures in so yeah. people can actually see. But yeah, so uh, tell me a little bit about Legion M. You guys are... Uh, Fairly new. You've announced very recently, if I'm correct. Yeah. Yep. Just we we announced a company at Silicon Valley Comic Con. Uh, we're the world's first fan-owned entertainment company. So, what we mean by that is um, we're we're raising capital with fans, um, kind of like crowdfunding, but next level crowdfunding. So in okay. this case, it's not donations to a company or a project. It's equity stake. You're actually owning a piece of the company and, and getting shares for, for your investment. And we're partnering with um, Hollywood producers, guys like Seth Green and the team behind Robot Chicken, Alamo Draft House, um, 42 Entertainment, Meltdown uh, Comics and Entertainment, uh, to create new TV shows and movies that the fans own. Okay. So it comes from the fans, for the fans, um, and our, our whole model is based on getting a legion of fans together to take over Hollywood. That's interesting. So where the idea to do this kind of project come from? That's a good question. I mean, it's really a culmination of, of my career and okay. my co-founder's career. We, uh, we started a company called Moby TV 16 okay. years ago. Uh, believe it or not, back then, 16 years ago, no one thought anyone would want to watch TV or movies or anything outside the living room and certainly not on your cell phone. Um, and we believed otherwise. So we started a company called Moby TV to prove that people did, in fact, want to watch content on their phones and other devices. We were initially told by Hollywood that it was a bad idea and we'd never go anywhere with it. Three years after we launched, we were celebrated with an Emmy Award from the Television Academy, appreciating us for innovation in television and creating an entire new category, which if you look today, is just as normal as anything else. It's just a integrated component to how we consume media um, and we grew that company and it was you know we started it in my backyard and we grew it to to great valuation and everything and it really had a you know disruptive but beneficial impact on the entertainment industry seven years ago um, while working on Moby TV we spun out another company uh, called New York Rock Exchange this company is set up to bring fans of bands and artists in the music space to the same side of the table selling song shares. So this would allow a fan of a band to own a piece of a song or an album that they like. We had great success with that company, but the SEC wouldn't allow that stake to have any financial gain. So it's really a collectible. It's okay. more of a you know exclusive collectible related to that band. And then the bands give special perks to their shareholders. Maybe they do an online hangout or they... Um, will provide an acoustic version of that song that only shareholders can get. Anyway, it's been great. That company does well, but this is next level. So for the last three years, we've been chomping at the bit as the Jobs Act passed through Congress uh, to finally, after 80 years, uh, create some financial reform in our country where everyday investors can finally participate in equities like this. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's not just the exclusive domain of the wealthy elite. Okay. And this, this has uh, personal resonance for us because when we started Moby TV, we grew that company, 400 employees, offices around the world. We weren't, al friends and family that supported us in the early days, we weren't allowed to take investment from them. And if we did, we had to pay them back just as a loan. They couldn't actually have an equity interest in the company. It wasn't a true investment, essentially. Exactly. The only people that could invest and make millions on our last company were millionaires. Which it's is bullshit. kind of... Yeah, it was bullshit. It, de it defeats the entire purpose of the idea of Well, this, this is, I mean, this like. is the crux of our... I mean, the, why the, the financial divide is so great in mm -hmm. our country is that there are advantages that the wealthy elite have that sure. the average investors don't have until now. And it's, you know, and there's still a lot of room for more reform, but this Jobs Act is an important component of uh, creating new economies, economies that are owned by the masses, that are created by the masses, that are supported by the masses. And this is what, what we want to do with Legion M. You know, okay. 
we could start a Hollywood studio with Seth Green and those guys. I mean, they've already done this. Uh, they're proven. They have a track record. All of our partners are at the top of the game. But we want to do it with the fans. And what the Jobs Act is allowing is for us to go out on day one and raise that capital with the fans, bring them into the inner circle, let them be a part of the creation, and have fun doing it, but also make money. Sure. Well, I, I, that, that's a nice change of pace thing. So, okay, shut me down if something you can't actually discuss here, but what, what it would be, I just want, you know, want to make sure. So what would be then the benefit for someone like myself, someone, a stay-at-home dad, to take part in this? Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, if you're a shareholder, okay, we, we want our shareholders to get what we call total ROI out of it. Okay. There's, of course, a financial gain, right? If you own stock, stock price goes up, we're successful with our movies and TV shows, then that stock price is going to yield a return, sure. right? Um, the other component of it is you're part of the team. You're, you co-own a studio with Seth Green and Alamo and all these other guys. Which looks great on LinkedIn, you know? <laughs> yeah, it's a great thing to put on LinkedIn, but it's also, you know, it's a cool experience. No, you get to come along for the ride. When we yeah. buy a script and attach a director, you get to be there with us. When we you know, are trying to determine which trailer do we think has the most impact or making casting decisions, we'll be there asking you, you know, and you'll have a voice in, in what we're doing. So a big part of Legion M is getting behind creators and directors and supporting them, but then encouraging them to engage the Legion. So essentially it's almost like, I mean, the next level of what Kickstarter and Indiegogo kind of is done with a very basic, you give money kind of thing, but you're actually not just looking for people to first give money and then potentially make, you're also looking for people to have insight and they're part of the process. We want to be owned by the fans and doing things for the fans, okay. you know, so everybody knows you don't create great art by committee, mm -hmm. but you can learn from the committee, mm -hmm. you can learn from the community and the community can make that art better. Um, and so we don't want to interfere with the creative process of, you know, the, the creators we're working with. But they like the idea of having access to a fan base that they can ask questions and run things by and get feedback on. We've already seen this at work. I mean, we had a sizzle reel that we were putting together for, for our fundraising activities. And we had created two versions of the trailer, one with the male voiceover and one with the female voiceover. And we had both trailers in rough form, but enough for people to look at. And we couldn't decide. Collectively, as a team, we were kind of split. We liked both. So we put it out to the Legion. And we asked the Legion, what was their feedback? And we got, we literally put it out at 11 o'clock at night. The next morning, we had hundreds of respondents telling us, you know, what they liked and didn't like. We knew the demographic. We knew men liked the male voice, women liked the female voice. It, it was like... So it, it, it was guiding for us. What we did mm -hmm. is we bought both. We did both. So now we have both. And when we target men, we give them a male voice. And when we target women, we give them the female voice. Well, yeah, that's the nice thing as well. Because as a person on, on the actual, yeah, on the actual you know, pseudo side of things, you can actually see the demographics and things like that. You don't have to start going, you pull the random hundred people. Exactly. You can actually be just given that data right yep. there. And then because people are excited to, to give it to you. Exactly. It's, exactly. That, that creates a fun well, process. And, we, you know, and, and it's good for us, but it's also good for fans, you know, like for for them to have a voice and if you don't want to respond you don't need to respond i mean mm -hmm. not everybody is going to be available to like give us feedback all the time but if you want to we want we want the feedback and we'll be engaging you um and the whole goal is that that you feel like you're a part of creating this content that's the magic of it to like get a, a community of people together to to bring new properties to market and, and if we're you know when we release those movies and tv shows you know, a lot of people don't realize this, but the trajectory of any one property is oftentimes determined by its initial release. Sure. How does it do? And, you know, the entertainment industry can be kind of impatient. Oh, and yeah. so if it doesn't <laughs> perform right out of the gate, then, you know, it gets, even if it's very high quality content, um, it, can, it can be looked, looked over. So when we have a movie that we're, we're putting out, and we've got a legion of, of shareholders and fans that have a financial interest and an emotional interest, you know, we can blow out that opening weekend, which determines your success after that. Okay. So, then what's, uh, right now, what's on the horizon in the future for Legion M? What are you looking 
forward to for the rest of the year and moving forward? Yeah, so right now, a big part of what, I mean, uh, you know, most of what we're doing is getting the Legion together, growing that Legion, getting it as big as we can make it, and funding the, the studio so that we have capital to invest. Um, simultaneous to that, we're also developing our first slate of projects. So we're already, you know, getting close closer to making some announcements about the projects that we're going to work on many of which will be done with our creative allies and some of which will be outside of them. Uh, we have some new properties and new franchises that we want to build that we think will have lasting long-term value. So we'll provide a good you know, return on our investment, but also be cool projects that when, when we get ready to share them, you know, I think people will agree like, oh, that's really cool. It's innovative. It's unique. It's you know, got some celebrity, you know, uh, some people pride behind it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, final question before we get the misters turned back on. Yeah. So I'm swe sweating <laughs> it out here. Out so, okay, final thing. Is this, as far as the being on the studio side of things, not the, the uh, investor side of things, yep. is this something you're specifically looking forward to working with people, like you said, like uh, Seth Green and yep. Alma Draft House, or is this something maybe down the line you will, would work with smaller creators as well? Yeah, I mean, this is just to be clear. I mean, we're starting with our creative allies, and we really need them to help us kind of grow the Legion get the and attention. get some credibility. But a big part of the Legion is the community. Okay. And we know that the community has a lot of really incredible talent and creativity in it. So we're going to be looking to the community also. We want to have a job board. So when we hot, you know, when we start a movie, a lot of people get hired when when you start production yeah. on a movie. We'd like to go to the Legion first and you know, we know that there'll be a lot of people that work in the industry involved. Um, but we're also looking at finding and discovering new creators and this is another area where the Legion can help us, you know, hmm. tell us what books are you reading and you know, what what up and coming YouTube talent do you see out there and you know, if we can if we have more eyes and ears on the street, you know, that's better for us mm -hmm. and we can we can benefit from it. Fair enough. Well, yeah, I mean, I know some uh, up-and-coming YouTube people, youtube.com slash concalpod. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Got to throw that in there. Yeah. Okay, so uh, final thing, where can people find Where can people find Legion M? Where can they yep. get involved with this whole thing? Yeah, so thing? They, can, uh, they can go to thelegionm.com. It's got all of our information and all of our background on there. You can learn more about the executive team, myself included. Um, and you can also... Um, learn about our creative allies, get a little bit more information, the type of projects we're getting involved in. Um, and if you have any additional questions, feel free to ping us. Just, you know, call us or send us an email. All the information's on there and, you know, we'll respond to you. I, I think that's awesome. Well, thank you very much, Paul, for chatting with us. Yep. Uh, me, I'm with us. Okay. <laughs> thank you for chatting with us. Uh, you know, uh, we're Constant Calibring. Find us at constantcalibring.com, facebook.com, so Constant Calibring. You know all this stuff. Bid you a good sign-off. And thank awesome. you again. Thank you. Appreciate it.